We've covered countless ways of the undead, dug deep beneath the earth, even further beneath the sea, and even had a trip into space more than once. But now it seems like those in outer space are coming to us this time around, and honestly, at first glance, this threat doesn't seem so threatening. While most scenarios in the past stem from serious and pervasive dangers that could prove to be either impossible or improbable to survive in, this one was produced in a more comical and satirical fashion, poking fun at the over-the-top corny and so bad it's good nature of early to mid 20th century sci-fi films like Plan 9 from Outer Space, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and War of the Worlds. But what if we took a look at the scenario that mainly only had two of its race attack and manipulate Earth with a mission of mainly farming the populace, and then turn things around like a dark, gritty reboot. What if those aliens were actually hell-bent on destroying all humans? This week, we cover the shocking, pain-in-the-ass explosive Meteor 2020, one step away from bestiality, Jack Nicholson is an alien confirmed. You expect me to beg, human? No. Lions, big. Invader Zim is your boss. What the? They may not be zombies, but they still want your brains. Your president is an alien, Soylent Green. Don't call them little green men because that's racist. 50s propaganda, make love not war. A spinoff about a big old willy. The last game went off the deep end. Rest in peace, pandemic games and THQ. An accurate representation of humanity, destructive playground game itself. This week, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive. Destroy all humans is Furon Invasion. also going to be mostly covering information and story relevant to the first two games as the Path of the Furon, while fun, seemed to get a bit too wacky in terms of lore and the Furon Empire itself. I, however, loved the game and won't be completely omitting it as the weapons were deadly and entertaining in their own regard. But today, we are going to be looking at the history of the Furons, the events of the games, and then getting into what this race's threat against ours would be if they actually attempted to destroy all humans instead of just having sex with them and building casinos. Eons ago, and to this day, a race of highly intelligent yet small and fragile spacefaring creatures named the Furons established an empire across the cosmos and attempted to stake their claim in whatever civilized planet they could find. Using their telekinetic powers and extremely advanced weaponry, the Furons easily held an unending campaign of planetary conquest. However, upon arriving on the surface of Mars, the race was met with hellish opposition from the native race of the Blisk. These crustacean-like bipedal life were resistant to many kinds of damage, yet the Furons were able to harness the radioactive nature of Mars's oceans and retroactively nuke the planet, leaving the planet of Mars a barren wasteland and the only surviving Blisk on a spacefaring warship that was able to escape and crash-landed in Russia in 1908. It was the Blisk's involvement that subsequently started the Russian Revolution that instated the USSR. Now getting back to the Furons, after they were victorious, the nuclear assault led to their race's DNA mutating and making them all sterile and lacking genitalia, unable to reproduce naturally, much like the genophage that crippled the Krogans of the Mass Effect universe. However, unlike the Krogans who could barely reproduce with a 0.05% chance of mortality, the Furons decided that in order for their race to continue, they would clone themselves indefinitely as a solution. They did not live in generations. The Furons now lived in life cycles, or if you want to be cute, extra lives. Hence why Furons have their name followed by a number, depicting how many times they have been cloned, like Cryptosporidium 136 and Orthopox 14. However, the Furon DNA required to create these clones was becoming more and more diluted with each new clone, progressively creating more and more defective copies. With no new Furons being born, there were no new resources to create fresh DNA to keep the cloning process pure. It would seem as the Empire would crumble against the universe's oldest foe time. Luckily enough, Furon historians did discover that before they established their empire, they made a pit stop on an uncivilized world and mated with its local primates. And yeah, we are the byproduct of midget gray alien dudes having sex with monkeys. Miss Garrison will need to add one more step in her evolutionary process now that this breakthrough has been discovered. But the point being is that because of this crossbreeding that slightly boosted early humanity's intelligence, humanity possibly held slivers of Huron DNA within their brain stems. This is where the events of Destroy All Humans takes off. 
Orthopox 14 was tasked with the invasion of Earth to discover if humanity still retained the dormant strain and deployed the Furon warrior Cryptosporidium 136, or Crypto for short, to the Earth's surface on his own. After 136 accidentally caught himself in the path of a high-powered testing missile, his ship was crash-landed and shortly after died from his injuries. The military closed in on him, procured his body and ship, and began experimentation and testing on both the body and spaceship. After the initial failure, Failure, Orthopox saw to moving his mothership closer to planet Earth and overseeing Crypto's progress on the surface. In Crypto 137's landing, he attempts to communicate with the cow and subsequently destroys it. His attack on the turnip seed farm did, however, bear the Furon DNA that Orthopox had been wanting and established that a small scale invasion of Earth would be necessary. Crypto sees to using his advanced weaponry and mind powers, somehow already knowing the English language, to abduct any valuable humans for testing, ripping their brains from their bodies with his psychokinetic powers on ground, yes, they can literally make your head explode just by focusing on you long enough and destroying any evidence of Furon existence afterwards. Using similar psychokinetic powers, Crypto was able to manipulate the minds of those around him and stage himself as a politician to sway public opinion on all of the strange occurrences. Discovering a secret organization called Majestic, based on the FBI or even the Men in Black, Crypto and Pox use their subliminal messages to try and control the human populace, but it is shown that even through TV antennas, Furon technology can easily blow the mind of the masses. Get it? In order to extort information, Crypto subjected a high-ranking Majestic train to swear to secrecy no matter the torture to something we can only imagine the depth of pain and torment this guy went through. Enough to almost expose the skull of the victim and shortly cause death after revealing the information on Majestic. Taking over the radio and TV airwaves through personalities, Crypto had to face off against the US Army and their prototype robotic units, but the Army fell to him all the same. Tracing Cryptosporidium 136's corpse back to Area 42, he discovered that Majestic agents had been using Furon DNA to create super soldiers with developing mental powers in a short time, as well as creating plasma-based weaponry. However, again, since these were minuscule forms of the mental and technological powers of Furon's wield regularly, they were wiped out, along with 136 in a saucer, after Crypto triggered the detonation of an atomic bomb. It did seem like an electromagnetic pulse was able to disable Crypto's saucer and force him into experimentation, but were easily dispatched due to the apparent forgetfulness that Crypto could use psychokinetic powers to free himself, eventually killing the President of the United States, who was then placed in a giant mech suit powered by his brain? After the complete defeat of the US Army, Majestic, and the government, Crypto assumed control of the United States, posing as the not-really-dead President. Using the State of the Union address, he was able to chalk up any wrongdoing by the Furons as acts of communistic nations drugging water supplies and mind-controlling television and radio broadcasts. This fear-mongering made it easy to manipulate the public into believing they were being screened for these effects, when in actuality, they were having their brains extracted and or scraped for easier and discreet harvesting of the pure Furon DNA. Crypto's faux presidency lasted well into the late 60s, where Russian intelligence and the KGB discovered the Furon's unpublicized takeover of the US and launched a nuclear attack on the mothership, wiping it out in one blast. After dealing with a string of rather less than sci-fi and more comedic events that were mainly just to have Crypto wreak havoc in the 60s, but lore-wise, it was mostly all an elaborate scheme by the Blisk to trick the Russians into believing their ways and eventually nuking Earth into a new utopian Mars landscape from the surface of the moon, creating a new home for the Blisk and wiping out the last hope of the Furon race. But Crypto, again, was able to take them out with the help of a femme fatale that he would eventually clone back to have sex with using using his new genitalia. Yeah, the third game, Path of the Furon and Wii spin-off Big Willy Unleashed, did little to add to what the Furon race could do to us, and mostly served as comical fan service and to show more of the Furon race being quirky and fun and... Kung fu -y? Feeling as if the original flow of the series tangented off due to a whole different development team taking over after 2. But let's dial back a bit and say, what if the Furons themselves never had this sterile mutation in their DNA and therefore cloning wasn't needed? What if humanity's brain stems were not their most valuable resource? What if the Furon Empire did what they did with the Blisk and saw to wiping us out in our current age and actually meant to destroy all humans? You know, the title of the series. 
case. If the Furons were to invade, we would probably see a similar stealthy invasion similar to how the game series started, except without the prospect of harvesting our grey matter. While Furons like Crypto tend to prefer a more guns blazing approach, the Empire itself could see to crippling humanity in its strongest commodities. With their abilities to manipulate our minds, cast images of people, or invade the bodies of humans, it's safe to say that within a relatively short amount of time, they would be able to infiltrate the world's largest military industrial complexes and take control of our leaders, and afterwards opposition from a full-scale invasion would be heavily diminished. But considering the Furons didn't quite take this approach with the Blisk and went straight into full-scale war rather fast, we will have to assume they would just attack us and catch us by surprise, and certainly not feigning to attempt peace like the Martians from Mars Attacks. So what would a full-scale invasion look like if legions of crypto-like saucers dotted our skies? Starting with their weaponry, Furons hold a gigantic and diverse arsenal to destroy all humans with. Vehicle-wise, their fleet saucers can be adorned with the standard alien stereotype of the abduction beams. However, besides remotely kidnapping people, this beam can also be used to fling heavy vehicles and even tanks. The iconic death ray able to instantly vaporize humans even if they weren't directly hit by the beam, dictating how intense the heat-focused beam is being projected. A means of destruction reminiscent of the invasion seen in War of the Worlds that can also cause vehicles to explode after long enough exposure. The plasma cannons at the front of the ship firing high energy rounds that can easily destroy vehicles and buildings after consecutive hits, acting as a Furon race's standard issue ammunition. Some come equipped with heat-seeking plasma drone missiles as well. It can also project an extremely powerful sonic boom that can launch almost any vehicle hundreds of feet into the air with a shockwave, although it will destroy them if it hits directly and violently shake the very foundation of any building. They also have the ability to manipulate weather patterns to summon a literal tornado to cause chaos and destruction on ground and air infantry alike, all while the ship itself isn't weathered by this destructive force of nature. And the piece de resistance, the quantum deconstructor, that can launch a thermonuclear cloud that would devastate anything within its radius, comparable to a miniature nuke without the fallout levels of post-nuclear radiation. If all that wasn't bad enough, they can also cloak themselves to slip in and out of enemy detection and can be easily used to scout human fortifications for intel. However, the stealth fields are limited in their length of time. The ships are protected by a kinetic barrier field that can withstand tank artillery shells, SAM turret missiles, and other high-powered ammunition, but only for so long. They can be taken down with continued artillery fire and even with high-powered missiles, and this was by 1950s military standards. But the Furon Saucer can also make use of its abduction beam on vehicles to drain their power supplies to power its shields back up and transmogrify the metal of cars, tanks, and other vehicles in an instant to create further ammo, even while people are still inside being crushed. They aren't invincible, but the armies of Earth have a hard enough time with just one saucer. A fleet of these saucers would be much too much to withstand as they decimated the major cities of the planet. Beyond the spacecraft, Furon foot soldiers can be equally as destructive, wielding the standard issue Zapomatic, which with the use of a powerful internal Tesla coil, could fire strings of high voltage electricity that could stun and eventually kill a target, even chaining to other nearby humans. The weapon does not run out of ammunition, but does require a recharge after extended use, so trying to wear down the ammunition will not be a viable strategy. You better wear a rubber! Uh, I mean, a rubber suit, I mean. The Furon Disintegrator Ray is the closest thing to a human assault weapon, except instead of riddling your body with high-velocity rounds, you just get vaporized down to your skeleton on impact, kind of like the weapons in Mars Attacks. The Ion Detonator acting as a remote grenade launcher that when, well, detonated, will turn any organic matter in its radius into dust and destroy anything else. The Disc Locator and Super Baller both will seek out targets and carry them off or bounce them around, slamming them into the ground and nearby walls for an extended period of time, and then the shittiest way to go, the real pain in the ass, a cheeky way to die with a crap ton of results, and the one gun you have probably been waiting for, the anal probe, which will launch into a victim's anal cavity, forcing the person to shit themselves uncontrollably while the shot will ricochet through a person's innards before ultimately reaching their head, causing their head to explode and preserve the brain. So you may see a street filled with shit drills leading to headless bodies and blown out pantaloons. Whether you're facing off 
off against these green meta <clears throat> gray gods, you also won't just be looking to the creatures themselves and their saucers, they will also be summoning freaking building sized meteors to rain down on you, and I don't know any building that could weather that, or hell, a city for that matter. If you're taking shelter underground, the Furons can use either giant underground worms or Venus human traps to come from beneath your feet and consume you whole. Let's say you're able to disarm these tiny guys. They look weak and feeble and easy killable, right? Well, besides their kinetic shields absorbing a relative amount of incoming gunfire, they also wield innate psychokinetic abilities, being able to manipulate your mind into believing whatever they want you to believe or forcing you to do what they want you to do. Overload your cranium and cause your head to explode, pick up humans and weapons and either slam them into the ground repeatedly or fling them at high speeds. They can also carry the ability within their minds to transmogrify vehicles and objects into other materials on the spot, mostly ammo to continue their killing spree, but also to crush people that are stuck inside their cars. And this all goes without saying that the Furon army won't be fully upgraded. If they did plan a full out attack without fear of losing their numbers, Orthopox wouldn't be hiding upgrades for infantry weapons and the Emperor himself wouldn't cut funding to armed conquest. So stuff like the Saucer's Death Ray and the Furon's psychokinetic powers will be at their max potential. They're not going to be restricted. Fighting back, well, would prove to be a bit much for even current day Earth. A sudden invasion would have the Earth on its knees pretty abruptly. Quick military response from major nations like the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia, China, Japan, and so on would prove barely formidable against the technologically advanced and defensive nature of the saucers. Transmogrifying tanks and army convoys with soldiers still in them, death raying entire platoons in the blink of an eye, summoning tornadoes to take care of towns while they move on to key points on the planet, and launching nuclear bomb-like spheres onto anything that did seem to be threatening. Being able to withstand large amounts of firepower, then draining the energy from whatever vehicle or device nearby to replenish their shields and ammunition. Basically, using our weapons and transportation to their advantage, we may run out of ammunition, but they certainly won't as long as we have vehicles out there. Now, we do have to take into account there were missiles launched by late 1960s Mother Russia that were able to completely destroy Orthopox 13's mothership with him in it. But it was mostly in part to the fact that Pox had been cocky that there was no opposition left on Earth and he couldn't even fathom Russia launching a destructive missile into space. In the instance of prepared invasion with heightened defense and offense, it would be a never-ending battle if they outright didn't just blow us out with their most powerful weaponry and stuck to a battle of attrition. And after we have exhausted all of our firepower, the time-old tradition of launching the nukes around the world would be the penultimate solution. Although the last time nukes went flying with the Furons, they all survived and were only mutated down to their DNA to be infertile, but still alive and able to clone themselves and exist furthermore. The only reasonable way of bringing them out of their flying saucers would be through EMPs, electromagnetic pulses. Disabling their spacecraft and bringing them to the ground floor would give us at least a little leverage, a little bit of a chance. Although fighting them on foot would still be an almost impossible task. Crypto, as a solitary soldier of the Furon Empire, could stave off the US military with his weapons and brain power pretty easily. Soldiers fighting the Furons would of course be at the mercy of whatever weapon each Furon was holding, either being shocked, incinerated, ionized, or so on. But even if the EMPs disabled their guns, the Furon mind powers alone would have soldiers having their minds blown, flung across the city, shooting each other, or even clucking like a chicken while bullets were flying by. Unless you could focus everything into an EMP blast, have some tinfoil hats on that can block mind waves, and then subsequently focus down the entire Furon army, it just wouldn't work out for us humans. If possible, the leading scientific minds of the world could procure a few Furon bodies and crash saucers, if they were to be salvaged, and attempt to do what Majestic did and create mutated human beings with psychokinetic powers, as well as creating weapons and using Furon tech to their own advantage. But creating mutants with Furon DNA and new technology within a short time span isn't feasible. We wouldn't be able to make these superpowered mutants within the span of a few days or a couple weeks. That would take years of experimentation, especially with mind reading aliens lurking across the planet. For standard civilians trying to get to any kind of safety, well, it would prove to be rather difficult considering the magnitude of destruction that can be created. Leveling buildings without really any effort, considering a large majority of their weapons could reduce skyscrapers to rubble in little to no time. Those hiding underground would also be faced with the giant worms and Venus human traps that would be summoned to burrow beneath and consume them alive. 
No matter where you go, brother, even if you find yourself in a deep underground bunker as a high-ranking official, uneasiness would set in as people would doubt each other. The idea that the Furons could snatch the bodies of people at any given moment and try and infiltrate their ranks to discover further information while controlling our minds would systematically wipe out any remaining traces and pockets of human resistance left across the world. No one would be able to trust each other in their struggle to stay alive as a species. Standard civilians and military personnel alike probably wouldn't last, and I honestly see it turning out worse than what the Locust Horde did when they wiped out 25% of humanity in a day's time in the universe of Gears of War. Hell, the Furons could even launch a meteor shower on the Earth's surface to weaken us, come in, and sweep up the remains after all the decimation. This is a whole different scenario than the Flood, the Necromorphs, or the Reapers. These threats deal in infecting the masses and using their numbers against them over time. The Furons have the capabilities to strike whenever they wish without biding their time and giving no warning to their enemies. Their vast superior intellect, mind powers, and technology are already ripe for the picking and can just decimate anyone they want at any time. The last remnants of humanity would look to the skies and wonder how we fell to such small, gray, bug-eyed aliens, and then realize they are already having sex with The Last of Us and leaving us for dead. The video is coming to a close and I just wanted to say how much I love these games in my teenage years and how sad to say that there's no sequel in the foreseeable future considering THQ went bankrupt years ago and EA destroyed Pandemic Studios, although they worked on one and two only. Hopefully after the intellectual auctioning of Destroy All Humans to Nordic Games, we may see Nordic Games do something with Destroy All Humans, but the last mention of the franchise was a small tweet back in 2015. So so who knows what will happen? Guess they are too preoccupied with making Darksiders and Red Faction? Ugh. At least the original is backwards compatible with PlayStation and Xbox. Can we start a hashtag though? Hashtag bring back the Furons. I want to see that in the comments and all, all everywhere else. Hashtag bring back the Furons. Maybe we can even get this to Nordic Games. I would love to see it. Let's get a reboot, a remaster, or a sequel. Just something. It's just been too damn long. It's been 10 years since Destroy All Humans 3. That's way too damn long. That about wraps things up with our buddy Crypto and his race of Brainiac green-skinned fear- <laughs> If they were to just go balls deep in the Earth's crust, do you think you could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against them? Do you feel inferior to the sheer girth of their power and not height? Do you find Cryptosporidium 138 attractive and want to sleep with them? Well, let me know in the comments, and if you say no to any of these questions, feel free to leave your information as well so I can personally meet you in person. Now, don't forget to uh like and subscribe and all that human junk YouTubers do to make a pathetic living. Donate to this fool's, I mean, my Patreon and YouTube live stream to support the channel and have your name featured on the hit list. I mean, uh, uh, donators list for future videos. What universe do you want to see next? Check the filthy community tab where you share your feeble opinions and vote like voting ever mattered. We've been in power since Eisenhower. <laughs> or, um, uh, d d d uh, democracy rules. America. Until next time, I'm ZachS69, soldier of the planet WoW Such Gaming. Stay well. Wow. <clears throat> Is that Jack Nicholson impression good? Oh shit, the mic's on. <laughs>